Hi and welcome back to Sonia's Prep. In today's video, we're gonna dive right into how I make my sushi at home. I'll be showing you how I make regular sushi rolls as well as how I make my tempura rolls. If you're new here, don't forget to click that red subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Now let's get into the recipe. To make the sushi, you'll need two cups of short grain rice, three cups of water, a wooden spoon, and some paper towels. So it's very important to wash your rice really, really well. Make sure that all of the rice flour, the white little bits of it completely come off and you'll know when the rice is thoroughly washed, when the water runs clear. Place that into a pot with the three cups of water and let it boil. Once most of the water has been absorbed by the rice, I place a paper towel over the top and cover it with the lid and I decrease the temperature of the fire to the lowest possible setting and let it cook like that for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, the rice should be perfect and completely done. And to finish it off, I add in one tablespoon of regular white vinegar and I mix that. If you have rice vinegar, you could use that as well. I mix all of that really well to get the vinegar incorporated throughout all of the rice. And to let it cool off even faster, I place all of the rice into a separate glass bowl just so that it can quickly cool off and I can start my sushi. While the rice is cooling off, I set up all of my vegetables, my fish. So over here, I have some shredded cucumbers. I use my mandolin slicer to do that. I also have some fake crab, kani meat, and I'm slicing up some avocados right there. Later on, I'll show you how I'm using some salmon and some tuna fish. I place my sushi mat into a plastic bag just so that it can remain clean. Now the nori sheet has two sides to it, the shiny one and the rough side. The rough side is always where the rice goes. So I take my hands, dip it into some water, take a nice amount of rice and put it on 75% of the nori sheet. I don't put it on to the entire nori sheet because I don't want to have so much rice in my sushi. Once that's done, I flip it over because I want this roll specifically to have the rice on the outside. And I will we'll show you later on how I do my rice on the inside. So now you can have your imagination run wild and fill up your sushi with whatever ingredients you will like. Over here, I'll be making some cucumber avocado. And to do that, I place the cucumber avocado i dip my fingers into some water rub them onto the side closest to me the nori sheet and i proceed to fold in and make the rolls at this point when the roll is done if you see any avocado or cucumbers popping out, you can very gently just push them back into place and that roll is done. Next up, I'll be making a different roll with the rice on the inside this time and I'll show you just how I make it. So again, the rough side goes up. I place my rice onto 75% of it. Make sure to dip your fingers into the water. It will really help you out not to have the rice sticking to it. And once that's done, the side where it has no rice, I flip that towards myself and I place my cucumber avocado in as well. So I try to make the same roll in two different versions, one with the rice outside and one with the rice inside, just because I like the contrast that it gives when I'm assembling my platter. So again, I place a little bit of water onto the nori sheet closest to me and proceed to fold the roll.
Next up, I'll be making a California roll with some fake crab meat, avocado, and cucumber. Here's the fish that I'll be using in my tempura rolls, some salmon, some tuna, and some jalapenos. So again, I place the rice on 75% of the nori sheet. I then place in my raw salmon. You can use sushi grade salmon because I'm going to be cooking mine in a tempura batter. I don't particular, I'm not particular about it being sushi grade because it's going to be cooked either way. I then add in some cucumbers, some avocados, and some jalapeno strips and I fold the roll also. For my last roll I'll be placing in some tuna. You can mix this with some spicy mayo but because I was going to be serving it to my children I decided to just leave it out. I then put in my cucumbers and avocados and fold up the roll. Here are all the gorgeous rolls that I just made and I will be frying some of them up in my tempura batter. The tempura batter is very very easy to make and I do have the recipe linked in the description box below for the full measurements. Make sure that the place where you're making the tempura batter is large enough to fit an entire roll because you will have to dip it into it and you know the tempura batter is ready when, when it has a pancake batter like consistency it shouldn't be too thick and it shouldn't be too runny otherwise all of the batter will just slide off of the sushi rolls get a skillet fill it up with a good amount of oil so that you can fry up your sushi rolls once the oil is nice and hot drop in your sushi that you have just battered with a tempura batter fry them up on each side for about a minute or two Once everything has been fried up, I drain it all on a piece of paper towel. Now it's time to prepare your amazing sushi platter and I find the best way to do that is to play on different colors and textures. So I try to place my sushis with the rice on over the top of it next to another sushi with rice on the inside and then right next to it one with a tempura batter. This way you'll have different colors and textures right next to one another. When cutting into a sushi that has rice right over the top of it, to prevent it from sticking onto your hands, I do have a plate filled with some water that I do dip my fingers into it.
creating a platter symmetry is so important so i really try to mimic like a mirror what i did on one side and replicate the same exact thing on the other side and wherever i see any empty spots i put in some cilantro or parsley which is a nice pop of color and adds a next level to the dish I'm not a huge fan of ginger, the ones that they give out in the sushi places, but I did want that sort of color in my sushi platter. So I have some red onions here that I have pickled in some vinegar and some salt water. For decorations, I use this teriyaki glaze and place it into a Ziploc bag and pipe it throughout all of my tempura rolls. For my spicy mayo, I use Frank's Red Hot Sauce and mix it with some mayonnaise. This amazing sushi platter is all nice and ready and we definitely did enjoy it. It was super delicious. If you guys recreate this platter, I would love it if you would tag me on Instagram. I cannot wait to see your creations and decorations. I had so much fun preparing this platter and I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video as well. If you did, I would love it if you would give me a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this.